thank everybody for coming out to episode 31. We have our beer sponsor here, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about um, a new company, or not even a new company, actually you guys are older than technology itself, right? For an IT, CAD, and consulting company. This is Joe Schmidt, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about HolmansNV.com. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Holman's in Nevada. We've been around for 37 years. Uh, pretty cool being in technology that long. Um, we supply uh, IT uh, systems to uh, all types of businesses. We also uh, provide survey equipment for people to work out on job sites, uh, surveyors and contractors. And then uh, what we're most known for, I think, is the Autodesk technology that we represent here. So most of you have heard of AutoCAD and all the right. various versions thereof. So that's uh, what we're Right. And especially for so many startups out there that want to get into the hardware game, they need to learn Learn AutoCAD, get your measurements right, and then head over to the SIN shop with Pavel and Susan, of course, and uh, maybe print some 3D stuff. And then you also have a consulting aspect? Yeah, right? so we help people with uh, getting their projects off the ground. Uh, a lot of uh, virtual modeling these days, so whether it's a building or a road or a product, um, it's all about creating it in the virtual world first, getting all the kinks worked out, uh, and then rolling it out to a physical product. Nice. Everybody thank Joe for the beer, because we appreciate you sponsoring the podcast. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. So. All right, it's a pleasure. Thank you. So we have quite the treat for you guys today. We have the top three, including all the three, Progression Labs teams in the house. So if you guys don't know what Progression Labs is, progressionlabs.com is where you can learn more. But it's basically a summer residential immersion program. It includes housing, includes a lot of money in the bank. All three of these guys have got $25,000 to spend. Um, now that you have cash, I want to talk about what you're actually going to be building. So if you wouldn't mind, we'll start over here. Um, you, you made Buzz the Bar, right? right? This is your company. So give us your 60 second pitch. Let everybody know exactly what it is. Sure. Uh, hey everyone, my name is Richard. And uh, the company that we started was called Buzz the Bar. And we're really an app that lets you order and pay for drinks right from your phone. Uh, bartenders will get your order, make your drinks, and send you a message when your drinks are ready. Um, you can either pick it up from the bar or they'll deliver it right to your table. Um, I was a bartender for a while and a lot of what I did was running back and forth from the cash register to the customer. So we decided to completely remove that from the system and in the process make it so that when you guys are going out to get drinks, you won't actually need to wait in line anymore. Right, a pain we all know too well. So okay, so how did you go from just having this pain into building this product? Uh, so it was actually really interesting. Um, I'm originally from New York and I was going to business school at Columbia when the Downtown Project and Progression Labs reached out to me to get uh, the, pr the application sent out to, to all the members in the entrepreneurs organization. Um, luckily, we were the ones who were working on something within the hospitality space, so it was really fitting right. for us to apply and eventually we got in. Um, we've been working on the concept for about a year already now, so uh, we already had a working product. We have 20 venues in New York and we already have a couple thousand users um, and transactions going through the application. So by the time the, you know, the application to Progression Labs is coming around, um, we already had a, a proven market, um, a business model, gotcha. and it was really interesting to come to Vegas, which is really the second market that we wanted to expand to anyway. Uh, so it really was serendipitous and it worked out really, really well for us um, gotcha. to get that application in. That's cool. All right, so out of these two guys, who do you think has a better product? Uh, <laughs> I'm just, just kidding. Don't answer. Answer. Don't answer. I, think that's product. <laughs> I like. I like it. All right. So you tell me a little bit. About, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your company. Sure. My name is Elliot, and I am co-founding a company called Travel Nuts. Uh, me and my co-founder Fede uh, actually just graduated from college in nice. June um, from Stanford. So this is kind of like our yeah, first into the real world. Yeah, yeah. dip into the real world. Uh, <laughs> so of. what we're actually trying to do is build software for hotels. Uh, and what we want to do is build a marketplace that lives on hotels' websites that allows travelers to book not just the room like they already do, but also their whole travel experience from transportation from the airport to the hotel, activities and tours that they would like to do around the hotel, uh, the coolest restaurants, things that the hotel already recommends and suggests through the concierge or oh, front desk yeah. we want to put online in the way that uh, the hotels can actually monetize from. Right, just like in a nice, simple place to find everything. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. I like that. Sometimes the sim simplest ideas are sometimes the best. But um, I want to talk to Dan especially, because if you guys don't know, Dan's been behind the camera a number of times. And he's a big part of why the podcast is even where it's at today. When I was talking about those 600 volunteer hours, what do you think? Easy 60, 70 hours of those. <laughs> those are yours, man. So it's good to see you in front of the camera. But talk about Room Champ. 
Uh, so yeah, so Room Champ, we started uh, at Startup Weekend uh, number six in May. Uh, and it was the concept that um, people travel for events. And so we wanted to make those that travel a lot easier. Uh, and the thing with travel for events is hotels actually have special rates for events. So if you're going to CES, South by Southwest, or any of these big conferences, mm-hmm. there's usually events, uh, event rates for those hotels. And so we take those rates and then make them easier to find online. Uh, so you know you're getting the best deal for that event uh, when you're traveling for those. So that's the premise for Room Champions. So, gotcha. Uh, we came together, the team got together, like I said, at Startup Weekend. And you're, and you're perfect for this because your background, like working in the Cosmopolitan, right? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, having worked at the Cosmopolitan yeah. and then at the Venetian, uh, we got to see, like the biggest uh, portion of our business was like some of the events that came through and they would take over the whole town. Uh, so they'd fill up every room in town. And so we saw it's a big opportunity and we decided to pursue it. So Yeah. And I didn't mean to cut you off earlier, but you were talking about startup weekend, second oh, place, yeah. right? Second place. Yeah. Uh, but it was it was fun because the team we had so much fun at Startup Weekend. We've just carried that fun along and, and yeah. that's the best part of it. It's like we're just having fun building a company and a startup around it and uh, that's the best part of it. Yeah, I do not know how you got the drinking name Angry Dan. Because that like <laughs> does not pitch you at all. You were the happiest guy. All right. I, yeah. I have no idea either. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's supposed to be a weird yeah. Anyways, um, so we have a couple questions from the audience. We have Kate with a question. Yeah, I'm curious. So after the, in- the incubation and you guys have gone through this Progressive Labs thing, do you guys have plans to stay in Las Vegas long term? Sure. I mean, we are really looking to build our team here. Uh, right now, I mean, my co-founder and I are actually on opposite sides of the U.S. Um, he's out in Portland and I'm in New York. Uh, we're really looking for a home base where we can have a lot of customer discovery and um, have a lot of business where we can call, uh, where we can go home. Really, what we're looking to do is build up the rest of the team here. Uh, through the Progression Labs, we've actually um, brought on several designers who are working with us and advisors uh, who are going to be on our board. So I think Vegas could be a very, um, a very real place for us to take the next step for the company that we're working on. It's worth it. And you guys, of course, Dan's probably here, but you too? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I mean, Vegas seems like a uh, natural place for us to be because uh, the tourism industry is kind of its right. beating it's heart second, along yeah. with gaming. Um, so we definitely want to have a presence here as to whether we want to fully, uh, I guess, stay here forever is uh, still yeah. up in the air. Well, I, I, I don't know if you guys remember, we have B2B, anybody? Okay, well, Tony was talking about subscribing to Vegas. As long as you get a lot of collision hours, yeah, make yourself definitely. really available for help and all that stuff, like it's, you can get a lot of out of it. Definitely. All right, so we have one more question. We Maybe have Dustin here, more. and he's also got a question. Hi, guys. I'm just curious, what is your single most favorite part about downtown Las Vegas? I can answer that first. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> it's uh, definitely the people. Um, you know, as a member of Progression Lab coming here, I actually didn't know we'd be so plugged into the downtown project and all the people. I thought it'd just be us three, um, which would be, I mean, they're great. The three but amigos, yeah. Yeah, they're great. <laughs> but it would also be nice to have, you know, <laughs> other uh, people to interact with. And we have, like, just being Jackie, um, Everyone in the downtown projects has been probably the best part. Nice. Rocks for that. I like it. D'Artagnan? Uh, you know, the people is the same. Uh, I love the Vegas Tech community, and everybody has a story, and they're all so so valuable and so worth hearing. Uh, and that's why I love meeting new people uh, when they're visiting, uh, when they stay here. Uh, and that's the best part, is yeah. just connecting to all the people. Yeah, you t- and he talked to me about this when he was drunk one night, too. He's like, I'm just a people <laughs> person. He's like, that's why I'm in this industry. Like, I just like people and their stories. All right. <laughs> but, yeah, you did, right? I mean, I... <laughs> but you know that's at his core, because when he's blacked out, that's what he's thinking. <laughs> you know? <laughs> All right, I just... Oh, him, but... that's awesome. All right. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say the women. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Nice. No, I'm totally kidding. Um, (laughs) Well, I just can't say that on camera. Uh, I mean, I would say the the community that you guys have built here, um, in addition to the people, um, I mean, we have great people out in New York, too. uh, But, you know, being from, uh, I guess, an entrepreneurial community of MBAs, I was very hesitant to to kind of see another, to move to another area. And I wasn't really sure what to expect from, you know, what you guys have actually built here. And it's really interesting to see a, uh, to be a part of a community where people are not only building up the companies that are here, but you're also bringing in um, companies from kind of all around the states 
yeah. uh, to kind of see all the companies that are around and to see what you guys have built. Uh, right. And I guess for downtown specifically, I mean, I was here maybe a month and a half, two months ago, and I saw all the progress that was really going on and building out the community, like physically right. building things. And that's, you know, coming from New York where everything's already pre-built and nothing really changes. That's uh, really amazing to see. Yeah, well, what I thought was so mind-blowing is how so many people around here have that mentality of growing the pie. Like, it's yeah. just such a high ratio of people that are like, I don't need to steal anything from you because this whole community is blowing up, you know? Right, collaboration. But it's um, people again, yeah, so unanimous on it. All right, so <laughs> so go ahead and uh, just give your call to action, the website, uh, any help you need from the community, and then we'll just go around. Yeah, um, our website is btbapp.com, but realistically, you can look at my shirt, search for the app um, on the iPhone store, uh, or the Google Play Store. Um, we're actually going to be launching in the Gold Spike and a couple of other locations um, in downtown over the next couple of weeks. So please look out for us. Oh, cool. uh, we'd love to hear any Do you feedback have a launch, from you a guys. Launch party, or just like in general, you're going to be down there? Any, uh, any dates in particular we should tell them about? Um, no dates okay. in particular yet. Uh, we're likely going to be launching at the Gold Spike, and we will okay. probably have a launch party. So we'll invite you all out for uh, an open bar on us. Cool. Buzz the bar. I'll definitely check it out. Yeah. Yeah. Congrats. We'll give you a round of applause just for you. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so if there are any hotel owners out there, or those of you who know any people that own hotels, hotel uh, owners, we'd love to talk to you. Back. We really want to help increase conversions on your site and increase your profitability overall. So shoot an email to info at travelnuts.com. That's travelnuts.com. Uh, and we'd love to buy you a beer and doc. Okay, let's get a round of applause. Travel nuts, yeah. Okay, I was going to say, here again. But Appreciate it. All right, last but not least. And then for Room Champ, you can stay up to date with what we're doing at www.roomchamp.com or follow us on Twitter at Room Champ. Yeah, because I got the dot coms, man. Good job. Oh, yeah. No email list for you, though, huh? <laughs> What's up? No email list for you. Uh, we don't have Angry Dan at Room Champ up yet, yeah. <laughs> but you can email Dan at follow Room Follow him on Champ. Twitter at Angry Dan, right? <laughs> yeah. Angry Dan Evil on Twitter Angry if you want to follow Evil. me. Yeah, or just down to the bar, you know, either one. <laughs> uh, well, thank you guys for coming out. I really appreciate yeah. it. Thank Great. you, Dan. Thank, thank, thank you, you for all your help, too, Dan. I really appreciate it. Yeah, and yeah. thank you very That's much. Awesome. I'm looking forward to it. So. <laughs>
or five dollars for two slices and a soda, which you can again share with a friend, which is very cool. Um, they're also going to have really great specials for Hennessy's Tavern again, co downtown cocktail room, beauty bar, and insert coins. So another really cool um, charity bar, and that is actually going towards uh, finding a cure for Crohn's disease for the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation of America. So super where the cause guys get down to that. Yeah. Now, um, I don't know about you, but uh, I'm pretty excited about Hal Savar. He's actually playing with his band every uh, Thursday at 8 p.m. at the Lady Sylvia's. Now, if you haven't heard of him before, he's actually a human jukebox. I don't know oh, if you can do any human jukebox. Human beatbox, box, huh? <laughs> Get started. You want a little beat for your next Oh uh, Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, beatboxing is slightly different from jukeboxing. Oh, oh. So, uh, oh human jukebox. There is What's actually a, a difference. Oh. Okay, so let me explain to you what a jukebox is. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so he has buttons on his shirt and he plays the tracks that you want. Not quite. Um, he does actually cover the songs, so you can request songs. He does a really good job at it. His music style is very, very cool. It's, uh, it's actually kind of like a classic rock vibe with some blues thrown in there so really cool vibes that does start at 8 p.m and again that's at lady sylvia's every single thursday so definitely get down for that too and the last drinking event most of you will already be familiar with it's vegas jelly and that starts yeah. every thursday from 7 p.m so if you feel like getting a bit of tech talk on or hanging out with the other nerds in the community then get down to uh the beat coffee house and it starts at 7 p.m goes right through till midnight so uh you can carry on some long conversations on whether or not ruby is better than python etc <laughs> etc et so definitely get down there and get your drink on yeah that's right my first beer in downtown las vegas yeah definitely it was probably my first beer as well really really cool event so all that drinking might have made you hungry and uh well you're in luck because we actually have jolene menina here and she's she's the head of the culinary arts um experience for the life is beautiful festival so why don't you tell us yeah. a bit about that well there's a lot to discuss about that so uh the festival itself is a full-blown music food art and learning festival and for the culinary side we have uh just over 50 chef restaurants sommeliers involved uh inside the festival we have a culinary village it's going to house uh, a ton of amazing chefs, about 60 different vendors that you can actually purchase wow. from an a la carte area. Um, besides that, we have an alchemy garden that is going to house beer, wine, mixology, and a learning area with the master brewers and the, the, the wine makers and the distillers. So that's open to everybody that's a part of the festival. And then outside of that, we have extra ticketed events, which are really fun. So our festival kickoff party is called Grills and Guitars. This okay. is the Friday before, so it's October 25th. This is hosted by Blue Ribbon Restaurants. So Bruce Bromberg, Eric Bromberg are the two chef and owners uh, from New York who actually live here now. They're amazing. Uh, on that lineup, we have 15 ridiculous chefs from Aron Sanchez to Mary Sue Malinkin and Susan Feninger and Tom Colicchio and Rick Moonen and all these amazing guys. And it's going to be this like camping bonfire jam session. So that's an extra ticket event, and then we're also going to do an up close and personal uh, culinary crawl. So you talked about crawls. So this is going to be on the food okay. side of it. So it's a three I, uh, three hour dining experience on Saturday, and then in a different one on Sunday, hosting between five and seven different chefs for each one. Yeah, that's incredible. I'm always surprised by the scale of everything yeah, that's happening. This is Life huge. is beautiful. Yeah. It's pretty large. Yeah, it's and really, out of the thirty, out of the thirty chefs, who who are you most excited for? Um, I have to say that I'm pretty excited about Donald Link. Uh, okay. He's from New Orleans. I'm from New Orleans. Oh, it's like some so gumbo it's like, or there's something. So there's yeah. a big connection right yeah. there. Boudin, gumbo, <laughs> food connection. Gone, Cajun pig roast. All about that. Amazing. And you, yeah. was, you were saying just then that people don't necessarily have to have a festival ticket. Some of the events that you'll be running, you can actually do outside oh. of having a festival ticket, right? That's correct. So oh, that's the cool. well, the festival kickoff party is the day before. Very so cool. So you could actually go to that, and the tickets are you know it's all you can eat, it's all you can drink. It's one seventy five for GA, it's two twenty five for uh, VIP, and it's from it starts at eight for the VIP, it starts at nine, it goes till midnight, and there's live music and all these amazing chefs and a really good time. Very nice. And you're working for the few charities I hear as well, which is good we to We are hear. doing a charity event also, which is uh, going to be for communities and schools in Three Square. It's called Take a Stand, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be a very small group of people that are going to be invited to this, or not invited, but can buy into it. Um, amazing experience, but yeah, for, for, the two, for the two charities. So we're 
hopefully, not hopefully, but we will be will cutting be, yeah. a very big check within the first four hours of the festival to these charities. Excellent. It's hosted by Elizabeth Blau and Ubao Keller, so cool. I have eight chefs on that. Okay, and then check yeah. out more at Life is Beautiful Festival. Life is Beautiful com. Festival. Okay. Dot com. All right, everybody, check it out. Thank you for coming out. I appreciate it. Yes, yeah, glad to have you on. We're really looking forward to it. be sorry for that applause because we have <laughs> Amanda Curtis here. This is the CEO and co-founder of the 19th Amendment. She's in from Boston. She's visiting the downtown project. She's wearing an amazing, amazing dress. Actually, Thank why don't you, you. Start, tell me about this. Where did it? Okay, when they so it? Uh, this dress is one of our designers that we feature on the site. Her name is Megan Hughes. Um, she's an emerging designer and she's amazing. So I thought I'd give her yeah, a little bit <laughs> of credit there. Um, so 19th Amendment. Yeah, rundown. Yeah. yeah. So we are a fashion Kickstarter slash portfolio site for emerging designers. And we manufacture for them in the U.S. on their behalf. Okay, so, you're, so you are doing the ma actual manufacturing for everybody? We and are. where is this all taking place? In, in Boston um, right now? So right now we're based in Boston, but our manufacturing is happening in Brooklyn, and we're definitely here to check out if oh, yeah. Vegas is a possibility. See what you can do with the Stitch Factory over Absolutely. there. Absolutely. And... Okay, well, and when, tell me about your opinion so far. What's your experience been like? You know, it, it's been absolutely fantastic and whirlwind <laughs> and so energetic. Um, the community here is unbelievable. I feel like even though I've been here for less than 48 hours, I know 10 people that right, I can call right. and be like, where do I go? What do I do? Who do I see? That it's is exactly amazing. the experience everybody gets. Mm -hmm. You know, we're growing and we right. need to see where we can bring manufacturing and what will benefit us most as a startup specifically with community manufacturing and then also you guys have zappos <laughs> right like we're an e-commerce company it makes a lot of sense so you it's guys really are on our radar yeah because i know i mean companies around here always seem to excel at culture but when it really comes to like manufacturing that'll mm -hmm. be that's kind of an interesting space to play in so what's what do you what's kind of in your head like what's your internal dialogue kind of going through when you're thinking about what it would take to actually like manufacture something here mm -hmm. on a high scale like that yeah so the way that our uh, company works is that all of our designs are purchased pre-manufacturing so that enables us to okay, tell okay. manufacturers like hey we have this order coming in right. are you ready right. for it or not so it actually helps us grow manufacturing in the u.s from the ground up organically um, so that's kind of what the process looks like. And for us, it's really important to teach designers how to manufacture ethically. And we'd really like to start that somewhere where we, we can build fresh. How to do it ethically? Yeah. Okay. So ethically. you okay? So you're an American company, and like yeah. you're probably all green, and you're like, we're gonna make the world better. We're semi green. We're trying to oh, make okay. the world better. <laughs> um, Not you know, green, the fashion yeah. industry has a lot of bad rap, and it doesn't need to be that way. Like it's the third largest industry in the world. Come on, we can do better than this, people. Yeah. It is, you know, I mean, and all, it, it sucks that the thought that comes into my head when I think about manufacturing clothes, it does kind of jump to one of those sweatshop yeah. type deals. You know, I mean, I know it's not the true thing, but it is kind of the way the media yeah. just got into my head. So yeah. that's cool. That's cool that you're kind of front and center about all those other things, too, because you start putting those at the front of your brand and it really starts differentiating you from right. kind of that typical thought. Mm hmm. All right, um, so, so tell me about this, uh, I mean, do you have love of fashion? Is this like you were born, little oh girl, like gosh. in the mirror, well, like putting yeah, a banana on your head? Yeah, my first word was pretty, around. so it First was, word? Yeah, I'm not even joking. <laughs> I was literally bred into that. this, yeah. yeah. Um, so, you have a whole family of designers and um, fashion So I gurus? grew up in the bridal industry, and I was always just around it. I'm naturally a creative person, yeah. and I really loved the business edge, so it was really combined both of my passions um, so cool. fashion is where what are I mean doing. when you scan your head what are some of your favorite moments where you combined your own creativity with fashion that you created oh geez okay so some landmark moments um, my first time putting my designs down the runway at New York Fashion Week was amazing after a month after just um, graduating from Parsons <sighs> designing for Ellen DeGeneres was crazy you design stuff she's worn yeah yeah if you google Ellen DeGeneres fashion um, there's a suit that I made for her for New York Fashion Week. Uh, that's that cool. was wild. 
That is um, cool. So yeah. I'm assuming you thought something of your head, you sketched it out, you like sent it, or you like had some people manufacture it, and then it was actually like on a model walking down a runway in no, New York. No, I made everything. <laughs> oh, you you sewed it. Like, oh yeah. Oh okay, gotcha. Oh yeah, no pattern sew the whole gamut. Right back to the sweatshop thing. You know, uh, I forgot. Yeah. You know? <laughs> that's good. That's good enough. Yeah, know. that's why I want to make things better because I've been at the other end of it. <laughs> that's great. Well, and then and when you saw people like walking down the runway, I mean. Describe that feeling. What was that like inside your head? You know what? It's just like one of those pinch me, this isn't really happening. I'm only at that time, I think I was 22. Yeah. Um, and what I really got from it is that was fantastic. But what was happening in New York is I wasn't paid enough to make rent. I wasn't succeeding in other ways. So that's why I really came up with 19th Amendment to give designers the same experience I did in that success. Yeah. But also to make them financially successful. Gotcha. By changing up the business model. Yeah, actually, in a lot of ways, I kind of like that. The fact that you had some experience kind of being on the bottom and like being able to like like not pay rent because that's going to give you a ton of appreciation as you grow oh, yeah. and as you hire more yeah. people. Yeah, I went from starving artist to starving entrepreneur. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> I don't it's like good. food, apparently. It's good for your industry. So that's, yeah. um, <laughs> was that insulting? <laughs> oh, not to like, okay, all right. Edit that out. All right. That's another topic. Okay. <laughs> so, Use models of all sizes. <laughs> okay. So I mean, do you inside your head do you consider yourself an expert yet? Um, I am definitely working on becoming an expert. I have made it my mission to educate myself about the tech startup scene so that I can use what I've learned in that industry and apply it to the fashion industry. Because what's happened in the fashion industry is nothing's really changed over the past 100 years. And the system is completely broken. I mean, when you look at designers from Project Runway to Zach Posen um, to designers out of design school, like they're not succeeding. Right. There's a 60% dropout in the industry. So I've made it my mission to that help them. wild, yeah. Yeah. It's something that no one talks about, so. Yeah. Okay, so so tell me what vision yourself in maybe a couple of years, two, mm -hmm. three years, like where would you like to be realistically? <laughs> I mean, I mean, you can make it grandioso, but you know, kind of like where is this train going? At this yeah, point? so um, right now we launched our website as of yesterday. Within the next year, we'd like about 750 designers on the site. Um, within the next few years, that will range into the thousands. We'd really like to launch the careers of maybe a few hundred really successful fashion designers, diversifying the fashion scene, and with that, growing manufacturing in the U.S. from the ground up. So taking okay. it right now, it's at 1% of what it originally was, and maybe bringing that up to like 15 or 20 over the next four years. Okay, and then walk me through the process of somebody, you know, if there's someone out here that like has this awesome idea for dress and has these cool ideas, how would they go about kind of connecting with you or with anyone else and like kind of build up a career in the same industry? Oh, geez. Being able to learn from some of the mistakes you made maybe? Some of the mistakes I've made. Um, so I would say for those people, like right now we're dealing with experienced designers um, to learn from them. So a designer on the site, they're coming on, they're going to get the tools that they need to essentially what we call a stiletto strapping. So it's using bootstrapping mentality in fashion. Um, <laughs> and just using like all the Took tools second, that, like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all the tools that we give them. So I worked on a line that we spent over $100,000 within six months and we never even made it to a runway show. So it's like using social media, using manufacturing to your advantage, using technology to your advantage because you can and why not change yeah. the way things are done yeah especially yeah i mean do you catch sometimes people that have like nothing to do with the fashion industry but you're like man you've got a perfect brain for this like have you ever got somebody into the industry in that sense um there are a lot of people who are just like fashion is not my thing but i love what you're doing and i could see it being like applied to other creative industries yeah. so that's been really cool like the music scene or the fine arts scene and being like that model could work for us gotcha so and if you weren't fashion you think you'd be on one of those edge Oh Did yeah, you be a total in another like, life, maybe? No, I'm, I'm tone deaf. Beatboxing um, somewhere, no, you know? <laughs> Beatboxing around. No, that's yeah, totally your, you know? your realm. Um, <laughs> no, I'd be a painter probably. <laughs> Starving artist again. <laughs> It's funny. All right. Well, so tell me about what it's like, um, kind of like behind the scenes at some of these like big shows. So I'm kind of curious. Like everybody uh, watches. Like, you know, you're a big America's <laughs> Top Model fan. Like, um, t-vote every. Yeah. So weekend. not top models and Project Runway gives me major anxiety. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so being backstage at like Lincoln Center for Fashion Week, it is 
I mean, we are sewing things backstage. I have literally pinned a hem of a skirt seconds before the design, oh, the model walked So it's not out. all faked for the camera. It actually is oh, that oh, scary. No. Okay. It, it's, you don't sleep for three days. It's not glamorous at all. It's quite an adrenaline rush. I'm a complete adrenaline junkie, I found yeah. out. Um, yeah, it's it's a real hard industry, but you have to be very passionate about it. You found out you're an adrenaline drink junkie? Oh, of course. I'm an entrepreneur, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. living on the edge. <laughs> I like that, like that. Okay, well, then what about, so at Stitch Factory, what do you view um, kind of latched onto down there? Like, what do you think their strong point is and yes. where you see Stitch Factory going? So I love that they're a collaborative space. Like, they're still using the same stiletto strapping mentality, right. like what they saw work in the tech scene and applying it to fashion. And I think that's making designers more effective. Um, it also breeds a really great community of creativity that you lose once you get out of design school and you're off in your own little studio and you're kind of cut off. So it's great to keep that um, workflow and creativity going. Yeah, I think so too. I, I think they're just doing amazing stuff down there. Yeah. And you know, at first it's like, I didn't even know the Stitch Factory was there. It's like, it didn't feel like part of the community, but then I realized mm -hmm. how much creativity was like coming out of it and I would catch it at different places. So. Oh yeah, they I definitely think, yeah. have some big plans in the works. I, I think so too. <laughs> All right, so we're, about, we're running out of time, but let's talk about uh, any way people can get involved, people can help you, any sure. social networks you'd like people to follow you social on. Social networks. All right, so definitely check out our site. It's in like baby beta. Um, oh, so you said you, you said you launched it today, right? Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> apologize for any looking, wonkiness. Yeah. But it's 19thamendment.co, not .com. We still have to buy that. We're stiletto strapping gotcha, gotcha. ourselves. It's all right, yeah. Um, on Twitter, 19th Amendment. If anyone out there is a fashion designer or knows of anyone, love to send them our, our way. And if you're passionate about like really cool fashion that you can't find anywhere else in stores and that's made ethically, Check us out. Hmm. You big Lady Gaga fan? <laughs> yeah. Is it the okay? <laughs> you are okay? <laughs> All right, well, thank you, Amanda. We really appreciate so you coming out to talk to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, that almost takes us to the end of the show, but we're going to end by jumping over here to Susan, who's got the last question of the evening. Oh, whoops. Slowly answering the question. I have the man of the moment, Ethan Duggan, here. And uh, Ethan, if you were a magician, what would your stage name be? Amazing magician of amazing amazement. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. And what would your special trick be? What would your signature move be? Um, putting a pack of ramen noodles in the ground, watering it with Bud Light, growing a college student. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag.